What's up YouTube and welcome back to Homebrew Subaru. In this episode I'm going to try and finish up my battery cables positive and negative and start getting things hooked up a little bit. What's up everyone? So like I said in this episode I will be trying to finish up my battery cables. I've got them routed into the car but I need to take them back to the trunk as well as kind of like hook up a ground onto the block and get it attached over onto the frame and then think about how I'm going to take power uh, into the car to power up my ECU later on. I also have a switch panel to install for push start and accessory switches but that will be left for another time. This is going to just be generally just to route the main cabling and get it to the point that it, I could install a battery if I wanted to. So I do already have the cables kind of routed through the firewall as maybe you've seen already. Um, I've put the positive up in the front here on the fender well and the negative ground cable I want to kind of put over onto the bell housing and then have another cable that comes over onto the frame in the front. Maybe just distribute some grounds from there. But first I want to kind of hook up stuff up here and route my cables through to the back. Um, I do have all the interior parts from the other car that I had kind of stuffed into the car. So I might have to clean some of that out before I can actually start to work in there. So that's where I'm going to start anyway. I don't really have a good plan set because I've been really busy. And uh, I should just be able to jump into it, kind of figure out what I need to do. Make up some terminals to put on the cables and at least get somewhere today. Okay, so I've gotten all the stuff that was in the back of the car kind of dug out, or most of it anyway. Uh, I've gone ahead and routed the cables along the center console to the left of the passenger seat. Realistically, the whole carpet and everything needs to go into the car. The cables will need to be routed underneath the rear seat. But at least I've got the length of them coming to where I'm going to mount the battery box. So I'm just going to drill two holes going right down through. Um, some nuts and washers and that thing will be banged in there solid. The breaker, I've got a 200 amp breaker. It should be high enough. Um, 250 is usually what I grab. I, there must have been a reason why I, I couldn't get the 250 or uh, maybe I ordered this from Amazon opposed to eBay. I can't remember. It's been quite a while. Um, but it should be you know, more than enough rating. The, the starter motor would probably pull like maybe 150 or 160 amps at the most. Um, the cable is only four gauge, uh, which may up the required amperage going through. Um, maybe 180 amps to actually get the starter turning at a good rate. It's really hard to say until it's measured, but that's my total guess. So this should be good enough. Um, the cables are cut to length. Uh, I've got another length of cable that's kind of just what's left over to go from the breaker to the actual battery and then of course the ground cable to go to ground. So I'm kind of ready to start making these connections but I'm probably going to leave them for now. I want to make sure I get the cables up in the front situated first. So I'm back at the front of the car. I want to make the ground cable going from the bell housing up to I think mounting it where the front bumper mounts. So I wanted to kind of get the front bumper in place just to see if it's going to be able to be used. And right now, I mean, it's pressed up against the intercooler on this side. And I mean, I could, I could trim a little bit out of the bumper mounting to make it actually attach and bolt on. The other side's pretty good, but the bumper, the actual steel reinforced bumper covers half the intercooler for one. And I mean, I, I might, if I wanted to attach it properly and have the bump, bumper cover sit flush the way it's supposed to I'm actually gonna have to start cutting and trimming out the bumper it's not something I really want to do and uh, I realize if I probably crash this thing that it's gonna be done anyway so I think I'm going to leave the steel reinforced bumper off I knew it was something that might have to happen um, but just seeing the way that it does fit and the way it covers the intercooler 
I know it's uh, difficult to get venting through the um, shark nose bumper so a lot of people drill holes and I don't really want to do that I also have this little ground coming from the fuse box and it has to go down to the same spot to be grounded out so I'll make a little extension for it as well so moving back onto the front I've got some cables cut and I'm just going to kind of show you how, how they're going to be routed and what's going where. So this piece first, this short little 10 gauge piece, uh, will extend this ground all the way down to the front bumper here. So this is where I'm going to be mounting the main ground lead coming up from the battery. And this guy will kind of just come through here and attach there as well to give uh, the best ground possible to the fuse box. Um, this other length of 10 gauge is actually going to go all the way down to where the ground cable is bolted to the bell housing and it will kind of feed up through here underneath the intake along the harness and go right over to the factory ECU grounds. I want to have the best grounds possible. I don't really want it feeding through the whole intake manifold to try and get a good ground. Um, a lot of swaps and builds that I see or have seen over the years, grounding is one of the problems and they'll, they'll run into an electrical issue, they can't figure it out and it's because they don't have good grounds. This other ground cable is trying to attach itself down in here. Uh, we'll go all the way from the that bell housing connection, run along the frame come through the front here and also attach to right there and that'll be the main lead coming directly back from the battery this positive cable will be my starter connection so this will mount over to the starter everything's going to have to be obviously insulated and will come up to the battery post up here um, but having the positive lead right here actually gives me the option to try and sneak a booster cable down in here and put maybe something on the intake for the ground and actually boost the car from the front if it's backed into something because um, obviously the battery will be in the back. So I'm at the point now where I can start uh, soldering on some terminals. Okay so I've gotten to the point where I've got everything finished and installed in the front. Uh, all the cables I ended up uh, soldering on those copper terminals. Uh, I've done that in the past if you look for the battery relocation videos uh, there's one for the 2013 STI and then my old Impreza wagon. I've, I probably have footage of that being done plus a really good description of how I'm doing it and good visual. But I have all that stuff done and then I extended the other things that I needed to. The ground coming off this fuse panel extends all the way down to the front. Um, this cable basically comes from the bell housing uh, which connects back over here. Uh, so, I mean, there's it gets a little messy down there, kind of maybe a little bit difficult to see on camera, but um, there's two grounds going to the belt housing, one that leads all the way back to the battery, and then one up to the front to, to run onto the body of the car. Um, I've made up this battery cable, um, the positive, coming from my terminal over here, and I do have it covered in loom going to the starter motor. The... Uh, the lead to actually activate the starter solenoid um, I've extended it from about this point so that I could have it come all the way to down to the end that connector and wire is actually off the old harness from the RB so the connector actually snaps into place and holds on and plus the extra length of wire allowed me to uh, drape it around there nicely the ground for the ECU connections I've put here it drapes all the way through the intake manifold and down to, you can kind of see it here, I could probably zip tie it once more, but it goes down to the same spot on the bell housing just to ensure that I have really good ground for the ECU connection. Okay, so I think I'm ready to move on to the back again. Uh, what I really want to do is just get the battery box uh, kind of bolted in place on the body of the car. I'll probably just drape the, the cables inside of it. I may put terminals on the end of them for now. Um, but I don't have a battery to put in yet and I'm not ready to so I can always leave that stuff for kind of the end to end um, but yeah I'm just gonna get that stuff mounted I'll show you what it looks like 
this is the location of the battery box that I've chosen but I've got the two holes drilled down through there and just bolts temporarily sitting because I literally need to get carpet and everything else installed and get all this kind of cleaned up anyway so I've got the two, two new terminals already soldered on the end of the cables and uh, I'll just need to do up a little length of this red cable so that I can get the breaker installed. I, I think I'm going to install the breaker on top of, of the lid and then run the second wire down in. I think I am putting the sub into this car and uh, whether I place it on this side or further back in the corner then I should be able to run the electrical quite easily from directly from the battery to the sub or the capacitor or whatever. Uh, so that is my chosen area. I'm not going to bolt it in like I said. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And uh, But literally everything else is done. The entire starting and charging system other than having the switch panel installed to actually crank the car over. Everything else is kind of done and tightened. So kind of ready to move on to other things I think. So something else I have taken notice of is the ECU harness is like two three feet too long <laughs> and that's literally because it's for a right hand drive car and the harness would have literally passed through and gone to the other side of the dash because the computer would have been located over on the other side or the left hand side of the car so I've got this idea I am probably going to cut a whole section out of the harness to the ECU and resolder all the connections it's something I've done a few times in the past and I'm, it doesn't really uh I'm, you know, it doesn't intimidate me at all. I'm ready to go ahead and do it. I, I'd rather clean it all up than trying to stuff everything up in the dash and leaving it there like that. Um, and that way I can lay out everything a little bit more uh, organized and, and nicely anyway. Um, there's two powered circuits on this side of the firewall to power up the ECU. But I think I'm just, like I said, I'll, I'll just cut them short and try and attach them, attach them to the car's harness or the dash harness because uh, literally having the fuse box all powered up most most of the dash harness should be live and I should be able to use it and it should all be fused although I will be kind of uh, rewiring some of it so that I can use my switch panel because I've set all that uh, literally I this this door I can't get it very far open and I need a lot of room to work so the car is going to be at the point it's going to have to be back down on the ground I'm going to have to have to front wheels back onto it but uh, I have sway bar bushings and uh, tension rods to install so I think I'm going to do that next just to get them on the car and finished and that way I can put the wheels on and actually get the car off the stands so that I can kind of roll it back and forth to have lots of room to work because my place isn't that big right so but if you like this video Definitely give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Leave your questions and comments further down below, and I'll see you in the next one.